Hi, I'm Courtney Harder with Case IH. In this video, we are going to talk through preseason checks on the speed tube system on a 2000 series planner. Uh, the first thing that, um, that we're going to do is once we've pulled the speed tube out of the row unit, um, we are going to take the meter, take the cover off of it. Um, to do that, we will unscrew the sensor and take that off. And next, we will take our rubber piece off there. Um, next, we will press down on this on the latch on the bottom of the cover. And now our speed tube cover will come off, allowing us to access all of our wear components. Uh, the first thing that we want to look at for maintenance items on the speed tube are our two feeder wheels up top. Um, the first thing that we are going to look at is, um, is whether our larger feeder wheel, um, whether the fingers of that feeder wheel fully engage with the fingers of the steel comb here. So we should have three fingers visible on, um, on that comb and we should, um, we should have large enough fingers on the, uh, on the large feeder wheel to be able to fully engage with that comb. Basically, the, the job of that comb is to take out any debris um, that could be caught up in, um, in this larger feeder wheel and causing it not to take in seed. So we want to make sure that comb is fully engaged so it can comb out, um, comb out that debris. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is take off our feeder wheels. So we can either use a needle nose pliers or we can use a screwdriver for this. So we'll use a screwdriver to get those fully loosened up. Um, so once we've got the feeder wheels off, we are looking for divots in, uh, in the flights of the feeder wheel. Um, these divots could, um, could cause seed to get fully seeded in that feeder wheel and not, uh, not easily kick out of that feeder wheel. So basically we're, uh, we're looking for any divots or flat spots that are worn in, uh, in the feeder wheel, anything that could catch seed in them um, is, is what we're looking for here. Um, we can take the larger feeder wheel off as well. And here we are looking for the same exact thing. We wanna make sure all of these flights are fully intact and, uh, and we don't have any flat spots or, or divots worn into them. Um, when we go to replace these, um, or to put these feeder wheels back in the speed tube, we um, have, a, have an etched into the top of the feeder wheels on, on both the large and the small one. Um, it says this side up on both feeder wheels. So that gives you a guide on which, uh, which side should be facing you when, um, um, when you are installing these again. Um, so the next thing to look at once we've looked at our feeder wheels and once we've looked at this comb, the next thing that we want to look at is the rumble strip. So the job of the rumble strip is to basically knock, um, if we've got multiple seeds in one flight, the rumble strip is going to rumble that, uh, rumble that flight and kick that extra seed back into the next flight to, uh, um, um, to minimize the number of doubles that you could have in, um, in that field. So the rumble strip, basically what we're looking for from a maintenance perspective and a performance perspective is, uh, is are these nubs on the rumble strip, are they all intact? Do I have any that are chipped off? Are they worn down? Are they going to make contact with the belt flight? So this will be easier to tell once we've reinstalled our belt flight and we'll just run those flights over that rumble strip and see if we can tell that they're making contact. So the next thing that we're gonna check or that we are going to look at is, um, is we're gonna get our belt. This being a preseason check, we've already taken our belt out of, the, out of the planter for the winter and we're going to reinstall it. So before we decide if we're gonna reinstall that same belt, we're gonna look at a few things on the belt. Um, basically, um, we want to, same as the feeder wheels, we wanna go through the belt and um, just check for any tears in, um, in the belt and also just make sure that, any, that none of the flights are, uh, are chipped off. So if, uh, if, the, if the belt looks good, if there are no tears or chips in that belt, we're gonna reinstall it. Now the housing of the speed tube has an indicator on it, um, has a diagram that tells you the belt orientation, basically which, which direction the bevels on these belt flights need to, uh, need to go on the speed tube. So we're going to follow that to reinstall our belt. Uh, 
Okay, so now that we've reinstalled our belt, we're going to look at a couple other things. Um, we're going to make sure that our belt flights can make contact with, uh, with that rumble strip. So that looks good. Um, the other thing that we're going to look at, and this is actually something that you do prior to putting this belt back on, we're going to clean off the sensor eyes with, um, with a cloth, basically, um, just like a speed, just like you'd brush out a, a, the sensor of a gravity drop seed tube. Um, just make sure that there's nothing covering these two, uh, these two sensor eyes on, on, uh, on either side. Um, the last thing that we're going to look at in terms of speed tube maintenance is we're going to tension up this belt. So the, uh, we've got an automatic spring tensioned belt here that as soon as you, um, as soon as you loosen up this screw, it's going to automatically put the necessary amount of spring pressure on that belt. So um, to, uh, to adjust that each season, just loosen up that, um, loosen up this screw and uh, let it automatically, let it automatically adjust to the correct spring tension and um, go ahead and tighten that back down again. And very lastly, we also want to check the seat exit point on both sides of the speed tube housing. So you can see this uh, little stainless steel insert here. Basically, we're looking in, in that area for any excessive wear that would cause um, a misplaced seed when it drops into the trench. So with that, um, for any further questions on preseason maintenance items on the speed tube, uh, consult your operator's manual or contact your local Case IH dealer.